So you just got your first 3D printer and you're excited to get into the hobby. You spent the time, you built it, you go and plug it in. And it bursts into flames and a demon from another dimension tries to start crawling out. Congratulations, you've started the apocalypse. Now while I can't help you patch interdimensional tears in space and time, I can help you troubleshoot your first 3D printer. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank. Whatever reason brought you to this video, you're having some trouble with your 3D printer. Whether you got it for the holidays and it's your first time into the hobby, or it's the middle of summer and you're watching it from the beach. Getting into the 3D printing hobby can definitely be frustrating. I get that. And right now my inbox is flooded with first time beginners and 3D printing enthusiasts trying to troubleshoot their printer. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through troubleshooting some of those more common problems that I'm seeing on the Facebook groups and that are coming into my inbox. Feel free to use the chapters and scrub along the video to try to find the particular problem you might be having. And if you're having a problem with your printer that I don't cover in this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what the problem is. I can always make another video. But without further ado, let's get started. So first off, assembly and construction. Right now on the market in 2022, almost 2023, most printers are gonna look like this. They're not as DIY and you know wire exposed as printers a couple of years ago, but this is pretty much a standard 3D printer. One of the biggest problems people have right off the bat is they just didn't build it right. And we're not calling anybody dumb in this video at all. You're new to the hobby, but go over it again. If something's not powering on, make sure your plugs are in the right way and make sure they're pressed in all the way. This, this, this solves like 90% of the problems people have immediately. A big area of confusion is up here near the top of the printer. This is your extruder motor and your hot end here. And usually you'll have a plug that says E and you'll have a plug that says X. I see people flip these around on accident all of the time. Your X motor is this little motor that moves your printer head left and right. And your E motor is what spins this little gear and pulls your filament through. That has to be the most common issue I see is those flipped around on accident. Next up is power supply issues. This is a very common thing on printers and more and more printers are doing it automatically, which is great, but there are still plenty of printers out there that'll have a little switch sitting somewhere on there and it'll tell you to switch it between 115 and 220 volt. Now, hopefully you know what power is coming out of your wall. If you live in America and I think Australia and Japan, it's 115, 120, but if you live over in uh, Europe, it's gonna be about 220 volt. So a quick Google search will usually tell you what it is and you're gonna wanna make sure this is set to the right voltage. The bright side is if you live in America or a place that has the 115 and it's set to 220, usually nothing bad happens. The printer just won't get power. However, if you live somewhere that has 220 coming out of the walls and I'm speaking from experience when I lived over in England and you have it set to 115 and you plug it into the wall, typically it can fry parts of your printer. Mainly it'll toast the power supply and you're gonna have to get that replaced. It's easy to fix and replace, however, it's a big bummer, especially when you're getting into the hobby. So if your printer's not powering on, make sure you check that switch. Next up is a super big common one and I know there are people right now screaming at me for moving this printer around and shaking it like this. It's leveling. You're gonna wanna make sure your printer is level. And I don't mean on a level table. A 3D printer can print like this it can print upside down, that doesn't matter. You wanna make sure your bed right here is level or another better word for it is tram. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this printing bed is the proper distance from your printing nozzle. Now, I already have a really good video covering this topic up here and I'm gonna link that because I don't wanna fill this video with even more stuff. If you're having leveling problems, go check out that video. But I will touch on keeping your bed clean for adhesion. That is another big pitfall people fall into. They don't clean their bed properly. Don't go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac, greasy fingers and everything and you're gonna start touching the bed. Make sure it's clean. Personally, I use 91% isopropyl alcohol. I spray it on the bed a little bit, give it a good wipe with a microfiber cloth, and we're off to the races. But if you want to get more in-depth about bed adhesion, go check that video I talked about before. Nice. Okay, all right, sweet. So, we got some printers behind me. Now let's talk about loading in the filament and getting the print started. When looking at printers, you're gonna encounter typically two types of printers. A direct drive printer that doesn't have a tube or anything going to this hot end assembly, and a Bowden tube printer that you can see has this little white tube going to the hot end. Now these perform the same function, however, the direct drive, everything is built into this little print head here. But if we look over at this Bowden tube assembly, you can see that there's the hot end here, and then a tube that runs all the way to this cool little gear assembly. Grab whatever filament you're using, and you're gonna take your little cutters and you're gonna pull just a little bit of it out and you're gonna wanna straighten it out with your fingers. Try to bend it and flex it so it gets as straight as possible and play around with this just for a little bit. So something like that. And then you're gonna go and at the straight part, cut it at a nice 45 degree angle. It should be a nice straight pointy tip. Now, before we go and install this, heat your printer up. Get the hot end to its operating temperature or whatever the filament tells you to put it at. Now, depending on if it's a Bowden tube setup or a direct drive setup, there's still gonna be a little lever gear somewhere on the printer that you can open and close. While you feed the filament in, open that little lever up and it should pass right through. And with the printer kind of warm, you're gonna push the filament through very lightly and it should actually start melting by itself. 
and you should start seeing filament come out the bottom of the printer head. You shouldn't have to push too hard because the printer's at temperature. And that's it, filament loaded. Loading it through this Bowden style setup is pretty much the same thing. Feed it through the sensor, make sure it goes into the little extruder lever, open it up and you're gonna feed it all the way through. And by holding that lever open and pushing through, you should start to see some filament dripping out the end. And if you're having trouble getting the filament out of your printer to change the color or the roll, you're pretty much gonna do this exact same process. Heat up your printer, push some of the filament through, and then you'll be able to pull it out of the hot end. Now let's talk about filament. Did you get the right one? First off, filament comes in two different sizes, 1.75 millimeter and 2.85 millimeter. Now, not a lot of printers left on the market, especially the cheaper hobby level printers, use 2.85. The only printer I have that does it is this overpriced Lulzbot. So you're gonna be looking at the 1.75 millimeter. With that, if you're just starting in the hobby, you're gonna be looking at something called PLA. This is pretty much the super standard basic filament that works on nearly every printer. And it's great for getting your feet wet and printing, well, almost anything you want. Just make sure you're paying attention to the temperatures recommended by the manufacturer on the roll. I've learned that sometimes black filaments or darker filaments have to print a little bit hotter than something like a lighter silk. Having improperly set temperatures can be a real roadblock when you're trying to get started. Now I could probably put this a little farther in the video, but I wanna talk about layer shifting. Layer shifting is what happens when the X or Y axis while it's printing gets shifted in some direction. What that means is as my printer was moving forward and back, it lost that position even by just a little, causing the printer to not make that layer in the right spot. The two biggest causes to layer shifts are improperly tightened belts, which is less common now because printers are coming more and more assembled, relying on you less to have to tighten the belts themselves. The other thing is G-code and files. A corrupt SD card, a corrupt G-code file can absolutely cause this. So if you're having repetitive layer shifting problems, maybe consider formatting or wiping the SD card or making new G-code and reloading it. Speaking of G-code and files, what if the printer isn't reading your file? So you go to start your print, you look at the files and nothing's showing up. Typically, this is really easy to fix. A really common cause for this is the file name being too long. So if we go back and open up our SD card and we start looking at the file names, sometimes they're just too long and you need to shorten them down. Sometimes just deleting a large chunk of it or renaming it works just fine. While some printers can read the super long text just fine, other printers typically don't like titles more than like 15 characters. So if you just go in there and rename the file, most of the time it'll pop up. And if that still isn't working, consider going in and formatting the SD card. Just plug it into your computer, right click it, and you'll see format. But make sure any files that are on it, any instruction guides or anything like that, you drag them over and save them somewhere else. Sometimes just formatting the SD card and loading new files back onto it can really fix some problems. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is clogs or jams. The printer isn't actually printing anything. Now I can make a series of videos on troubleshooting this issue, but most of the time it's because your bed isn't level. And I know that sounds silly, but your printer is trying to print. It's trying to push filament through the tube or through the hot end, but your nozzle could potentially be too close to your bed. If your nozzle is too close to the bed, then no filament's gonna be able to get pushed out and it might start making weird clicking noises or popping noises and just not printing. So first, again, I'm gonna recommend you watch that bed leveling video. However, if you understand how to level your bed, just raise your nozzle up a little bit. That usually leads to most of the jams and clogs that people have. You don't need to start replacing hot ends and tubes and doing all this weird stuff if you have a clog. All that's in there is plastic. Unless you fed some metal or something into there, the only thing clogging the nozzle is plastic. Also, if you're using a Bowden tube style printer like this, make sure that tube is pushed all the way down in there. If that tube starts to back out a little bit, it'll make a kind of a bigger gap inside the printer head and it'll clog up. So that's gonna do it more for the hardware side of things, the physical problems people have when setting up their printer. So now let's talk about the software side. A couple issues I see people have when they're dealing with their slicing program and actually trying to make the file print. First up, let's talk about previewing and reviewing your print. This looks pretty cool and would be really neat to watch a 3D printer build, but most 3D printing programs have a preview uh, feature. So if I go in here and look at the print, I can drop this slider down and I can see that it's probably not gonna stand up on that very fine point at the bottom. Just taking the time to review your print and understand the you know feasibility of how it's going to print can save you tons of frustration. Next up is probably way too many supports and way too dense of supports. 62% of this print is dedicated to just the supports. I know it can be a little scary to go into the custom settings on some programs, but if you do a little bit of searching up top, you'll find support overhang angle and support density. Change these immediately. I've learned that most printers can do about a 60 degree overhang angle. I even run a 65 and your support density, it does not need to be 20%. You can lower that to something anywhere between three to 5%, but make sure again, you're reviewing your prints. Just by adjusting those two settings alone, I was able to take this from over a three day print to a day and a half. 
And now instead of 62% of the print being in supports, only 30% of it is. And yes, I know I could, this is a helmet and I can block out the center support. There's a video for that type of stuff. I know, this is just an example. That support overhang angle is what's telling the printer what it can and can't print in midair. This is obviously a very flat piece of the helmet. It can't print that in midair. It needs some support under it. And that support density is literally how much material is being dedicated to the support. You can see now that this center structure is nearly completely hollow because it can be. So by just adjusting those two little settings, you can save a ton of material in time. But again, it's not gonna work for everything, so definitely play around with it. And finally, probably the most common thing I see when referring to 3D printing programs and slicing software is people just being in a rush. Now, I know this sounds really stupid to talk about because this isn't really about the program, but it's people wanting to get things done too quick. Especially if you're new in the hobby and you're trying to learn and get the basics under your belt. I'm sure a lot of us would rather have a nice finished print that took, you know, 24 hours rather than five failed prints that you were trying to get done in 22 hours. Just because you see some people printing way faster and posting about how awesome and amazing and quickly they got this one project done, take your time, you'll get there. And that actually leads me to my final point in this entire video. You're gonna be bad at this. Now, I'm not saying that to like discourage you or anything. I'm trying to paint a realistic picture here. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna have issues. You're gonna have failed prints. You're gonna make really silly dumb mistakes that you look back on and you're like, why did I ever think that was gonna work? You're gonna consciously or subconsciously compare yourself to other people when you're posting, wanting to know why their thing looks better than yours or how you can cut down the time or how you can make your printer go faster. It's gonna happen. It's all a learning curve and you just need to relax. Everybody who's in this hobby has had mistakes, had failures, had issues, no matter what they say, it's been a struggle. So have patience, take your time and take breaks. Sometimes it's better to just walk away from the hobby just for a little bit, take a breather, go for a walk and come back and troubleshoot some problems. But what I can absolutely say about the hobby is most people really wanna help you. Between the 3D printing groups, the Reddit, the discords, all that type of stuff, YouTube videos and tutorials, people really wanna help you get into the hobby and troubleshoot the problems you're having. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask and post. However, before you go making the 9,000th post on the Facebook group, use the search feature. It can really lead to some good solutions. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something new in this, especially if you're new in the hobby and you're having some of the little frustrations that we've all dealt with. I'm gonna link some more videos and resources down below to, that goes in a little bit more depth in what I talked about in this video, whether it be some 3D printing settings, better assembly of the printer and understanding the hardware, and even a whole playlist on how to get started in 3D printing that might help you guys out. If you did find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have tons of 3D printing related media and content coming out and I don't want you guys to miss it. So make sure you ring the notification bell. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or problems that I didn't cover in this video, drop that comment down below. I read all of them and I do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if enough questions pop up, I can always go and make a follow-up video to this one. Guys, I'm so excited to be wrapping up 2022. It was such an amazing year and I am so excited for what's about to happen in 2023. I am full-time YouTuber, content creator, Iron Man guy now, and I am so excited. I've been working on a new website, new merch, new logos, con events, tours, dates, new videos, bigger projects. I just, I can't wait to share it all with you guys. So thank you for helping me make all of this possible. Thank you so much for watching this video or any of the other ones that you viewed. And you guys have a good day and a happy new year. No blooper, just uh, me with my, my, my pooper. You're a good girl, Maya. I love you. <laughs>